Sports Time now. Sean Green joins us live from the sports studio. Sean, what do you have for us tonight? Well, good evening to you, Lisa. Good evening, Barbados. Well, rain in Trinidad, rain interruptions resulted in an early end to day one of the seventh round regional first class championship between the Barbados Pride and the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force at their Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Red Force closed the day on 192 for five. Kyle Mears has so far picked up three for 39. Shamar Holder has two for 49. Now, Joshua De Silva, he is not out on 67. Meanwhile, at Providence, rivals Guyana Jaguars are 115 for four versus the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. And in St. George's, Jamaica Scorpions are 285 for three against the Windward Islands Volcanoes. And Krumah Bonner, he is on 131. Paul Parma has 65. Now, those two have so far put on 157 for the fourth wicket. Well, in more cricket news, it will be India versus host Australia in the finals of the ICC Women's T20 World Cup. In today's first semi-final in Sydney, persistent rain saw the match between England and India abandoned without a ball being bowled. Now, with no reserve day, the rules allow for group winners' progress to the final in the event of an abandoned game. And with India having topped Group A, they will now travel to Melbourne to take part in Sunday's finale. Meanwhile, conditions improved for the second semi, and it was Australia who pulled off a narrow five-run win against South Africa via the duckworth lewis Stern method. Sent into bat, Australia scored 134 for five of their 20 overs. Meg Lanning, she got 49 not out, and Dane Van der Kirk, she got three for 19. Now set a revised target of 98 in just 13 overs, South African women were held to 92 for five despite an unbeaten 41 by Laura Walvart. Time for the second half in sports now. Sean is back. Sean, athletics? Yes, yes. Husband's House has made it four in a row at Parkinson Memorial School Sports today after they dominated their inter-house track and field meet at the National Stadium. Husband's ended on 805 points ahead of Barnett on 689. Howard in third with 547 and Jilts fourth with 518. We take a look at some of the action in the 400 meters. Our highlights begin with the final 100 meter event in the boys under 20 division and the rivalry came between Mitchell Jordan of Husbands, that's red, and Tyrell Clark of Barnett House from the Green Vikings. He's the one in the fluorescent green, now taking command of this one. Move over Jordan, this race is mine, he says, Tyrell Clark of Barnett. Let's move to the 400 meters. This is the under 13 girls event, which quickly became a two girl race. That's Renika Brooks in the Parkinson School PE kit with the blue greenish right forearm coming home. She's from Jilt's house. Kaylee Callender of Howard, though, looking to hunt her down, but she just didn't have enough in the tank to catch Brooks, the eventual winner of the event. Under 13 boys and Amario Ford of Howard, he's the one in the white shirt with the yellow headband off to a good start in this event eating up half the field in no time and he didn't really have anyone to push him in this race so so he was running alone here fighting through the pain of the lactic acid buildup but he wins this one hands down next up the under 15 girls and this too was a no contest for Jaquila Waterman who took over the running in the second half of the race she's the one in the red tee with the black shorts Pulling away from her closest rival, Kimara Trotman. Waterman, the clear and present winner in the 400 meters under 15 girls. More points in the bag for the defending champions, Husband's House. Next, the under 15 boys, three the hard way, a sea of red up front. The athletes from Husband's taking command of this one. Check out Nicola Cox taken to the front of the pack. Here he is in the camera shot all alone at this point. That's a win for Husbands. Cox finished in first. Shamar Blanchard in second. And Nathaniel Nurse in third. One, two, three, Husbands. On the line are the under-17 girls. And this was one of the more entertaining and unpredictable races of the day. That's Kia Ann Foster of Jilts in the all-blue. Korea Brathet of Husbands in the red and blue. Foster on course for the win. Wait a minute, but here comes the fast finishing. Chanel Sandy for the Barnett in the green. Where did she come from? Can she take down Foster? Yes, she can. Reeling her in and passing her now. Powering to the line with authority. Take a bow, Sandy Ford. Let's skip to the big girls. This is the under-20s. Another interesting race. 
and Nikimbi Marquez of Husbands is comfortably out front as they reach the 100 meter mark or so. Shania Riley of Barnett trailing her. But again, look at the athlete on the inside in lane number two in the green. Tamara Hoyt from all of the blue. Well, she's in green. Kicking into another gear and taking down the leader and a lot left in her reserve tank. Beautiful top end speed. Hoyt slams the field. Now the big final in the under 20 boys. Another keen contest. Let's pick it up from the final turn with husbands Tyreek Herewood in the red coming home. And what's this? Another green shirt come from behind victory. You've got to be kidding me. That's Mitchell Joseph, also of husbands, blowing past here with to close down the 400s at the Parkinson Memorial School Sports. Well, it's good to be green. Well, tonight's Barbados Sandy Lane Gold Cup feature. It features the horses from St. Lucia. It's good to see the CSME flavor back in the mix for the Gold Cup. And St. Lucia, for the first time, will be represented by the five-year-old gelding, Colonel Pride. Owned by the China Horse Club, he's expected to be among the front runners in the race. After all, he's known to be a big galloper. So should the race be of a good pace, he'll be quite the contender. His trainer, South African Dion Visser, admits the trip to Barbados was a setback, especially in the delay experience in the port. But with that behind them and the race just days away, Colonel Sprite is coming into his own and has taken to the turf really well. It's a very open race. Um, the horses didn't travel well, but they seem to be coming back into themselves slowly. Would have been ideal if we had had another week. But um, I'm happy with the way they're progressing in the last few days. Tomorrow we'll, we'll know more. But um, yeah. It's a very open race. If we have luck in running, we'll be in with the chance, but um, you've got to have respect for all the other horses around. So it's, it's a very open race. St. Lucia actually has doubled the entry of Colonel Price, stablemate Run Bayou, also taking the 1800 meter trek. Trained by Robbie Hewitt's son, Run Bayou is known to have good form on the grass and likes to come off the pace as a flying finisher. Arriving on the island a few days ago, he has not lost much condition and depends on just how the race pans out, he can be in with the big money. Coming out of a partnership fostered three years ago with the Barbados Surf Club through a scholarship program for talented Chinese horsemen and women, the China Horse Club will set two of its best jockeys in the saddles. Chen Li, who has already been on trips around the garrison on Gold Cup Day, will partner with Colonel's Pride, while James Chuo will be on board run by you. Ironically, both horses are drawn next to each other having to make the running by the rails in post positions one and two. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports.